the recent developments in northern Mozambique, I think, have been uh, burying the, the whole region of uh, southern uh, Africa. Uh, there's quite some disturbing footage on the uh, social networks going around of well-coordinated insurgent attacks, the praising of symbols of the Islamic State and uh, atrocities against civilians and uh, perceived traitors um, from both sides, which are quite difficult uh, to digest. What has started in 2017 with an assault on a uh, police station and public infrastructure in the coastal town of Mozimba da Praia in the Cabo Delgado province, province was first perceived as a rebellion of in disenchanted, radicalized Muslim youth. Uh, all that in a, in a region that is rich in natural resources, but had so far little profited from um, Mozambique's economic uh, growth. But very contrary to the expectation to be able to resolve these questions relatively rapidly, uh, the conflict dragged along despite the intensifying military interventions of national security forces and private international uh, military companies and reached in 2020 uh, new levels of uh, intensity. Scherbel was already uh, referring to the numbers. Um, we are counting already more than 1,000 uh, deaths and um, UN speaks of uh, 250,000 displaced persons, all that in the middle of a global health pandemic, COVID-19, um, is quite a complicated situation uh, for the country to deal with. On the good side, we can say that uh, there is quite a lively public debate going on in Mozambique and internationally, and a lot of important research is carried out on the root causes of this uh, violent uprising. Um, this research has contributed a lot uh, to um, better understand the insights of these complex entanglements of factors that are behind the conflict. There are internal factors like uh, unequal economic growth, uh, historic ethnic re religious tensions in the region, and as well the, the new power struggles um, in the context of the redefining um, of political and social order in Mozambique after the most recent peace agreements. And uh, there are obviously also external factors, um, criminal uh, terrorist uh, networks influencing the region and trying to profit from, um, from the uh, um, vulnerabilities uh, that they find there and geopolitical uh, conflicts. But uh, in all these debates, much less emphasis has been put on the implications of the crisis in the southern region, and as well um, on possible options, how these institutions of collective uh, security that are in, in place in, in SADC could actually respond and help to mitigate this, uh, this crisis. Clearly, there has been some form of radicalization taking place among the Jews. Now, this radicalization must not be automatically linked to the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda. This is an extremist narrative unique to Cabo del Cardo. And when at the end of the day we saw a government clamping down 2016 onwards, uh, which they have initially denied at all costs, making a, a local dispute that has to be managed at local level, then has given way to the initial attacks in 2017 on Mosamboa, the prior. What role has Ansar of Suna played in this? We have to understand that there has been some level of foreign influence. We have seen, if you go back to Ansar al Suna, the voice of specific Tanzanians. Um, there was even videos distributed uh, in which a Kenyan was featured propagating such an extremist narrative. And I don't think we should underplay that role within the insurgency. But by no means, by no means should we at the same time deny how the local conditions has provided the ideal fertile ground for them to propagate and to accelerate the support of acts of violence. The insurgency since then 
has evolved until where we stand today with the port falling or falling on in on 11 august 2020 what we have seen is that an insurgency has gained sophistication access to weapons that we have never seen before now the type of actions taken on ground level clearly indicate that this is now much more than just Cabo Delgado, that there are definite transnational influences at play within the insurgency. What is interesting though, and I think this matter is so important, insurgents still refer to themselves as Shababs, the name being used by locals. We have seldom picked up that they refer to themselves as the Islamic State, which brings us to the question of, but where do we stand with the Islamic State in this insurgency? 2019, the first claim to credit, admittedly at that point in time, I was highly skeptical. But to explain this, we have to look broader at where we stand with the Islamic State. And I think this is the problem with Kabul del Qadu. We have brilliant experts on the local routes and the local conditions. But when it comes to the Islamic State and explaining their role, if you're not an Islamic State expert, you're going to fall short in understanding what is happening now. 35 claims to credit, photo reports. Does this mean they are playing a leading role as we sit here today? I will vehemently say no, they are not. They are propagating this, yes, through the media jihad, but that is typical to their strategy of global expansion. The insurgency has allowed them the ideal opportunity for the first time in Southern Africa to step in and find and seek to find a footprint as we are seeing they are propagating in the official propaganda media channels. ISCAP cannot be ignored, but for as long as this insurgency lingers on, the risk of them finding an institutionalized presence is extremely, extremely high, and we cannot ignore that or that reality. But for now, the local routes the local conditions, the local discontent remains predominant within Cabo del Cardu, and we cannot also. So what we have to do is to say that these factors are not mutually exclusive, and I cannot understand why people are trying to find a mutually exclusive cause, causation factor in this whole insurgency. It's a combination of what is happening with any extremist terror groups and how they relate back to Cabo del Cardo. Most of the prior and the attack we have now actually have also an irony in it. And the irony is as follows. The insurgents have never shown a capacity to go in, execute attacks, control the area for sustained periods of time. So we are finding the insurgents, and this is the, a massive congregation of insurgents at this point in time, a massive congregation, the biggest yet since we have seen in 2017. And now we are sitting with them confined to MDP and the port area. So what are they going to do now? holding on to MDP and media reports stating that this is going to be their next new capital, I think is completely overestimating the insurgents' capacity and capability. But they have to get out of MDP. They can't hold on to that port. They have not proven it. I have not seen such cap capacity and capability to be able to do it. So they have actually created an attack with great propaganda value. 
they have exposed government security forces to a great extent and the limitations to a containment strategy. And yet, now we have the port, now what? And I think that is the big question that we have to answer looking forward. Is this going to redirect the nature of the insurgency? Is Cabo Delgado going to become too small for the insurgents? And here I agree, the risk of expansion in the rest of Mozambique must not be underestimated, but not in its current form and format. My fear is that we can see because of foreign influence and the transnational nature that insurgents will start reverting to underground networks, underground cells, able to execute attacks beyond Cabo Delgado. If we look at the massive deployment taking place around Palma, around MDP and attacks reported as late as yesterday afternoon on the outskirts and the neighborhoods of MDP, not the port that involved that, it is a question of time before that port will be retaken, what is ever left of it for the government. So if government plays this cleverly, they can execute massive embarrassment back to the insurgents. Will it be done? We will have to wait and see. Beyond the issue of hard security, and of course this uh, uh, requires us to first of all have an assessment, as uh, other speakers have uh, provided, of the current security challenges that are in play and what's required to deal with those hard security challenges in terms of building an effective counterinsurgency strategy, building the competencies of the security agencies that are involved, uh, both within the Mozambican. Uh, situation, but also in terms of any other uh, existing support that could be provided uh, by member states in SADC or indeed beyond that. And uh, uh, we hope to get a little bit more clarity in the coming days and weeks about how SADC might step up to the table, but also how Mozambique is navigating a series of bilateral discussions with a range of other actors on the continent and beyond to see how it can shore up uh, its own internal uh, competencies and capacities. This is likely to continue uh, with a reliance on private military contractors such as the Dyke Advisory Group. Uh, and I think on the security side of the uh, issues, uh, one area of the crisis group and our colleagues at ACLED and Zitama who are working on the Cabo Ligado project, which I hope you're all uh, receiving copies of that weekly report. Uh, that we're concerned about the possible extension of a hard security option for securitized corridors uh, in areas that do not extend uh, beyond the interests of particular uh, development and economic interests in the region, namely the primarily the LNG uh, projects that are under development, that there needs to be a wider angle security lens, both in terms of hard security, uh, but in terms of, of a range of other issues dealing with human security and development needs uh, in the province. Uh, specific areas of concern which have been flagged in uh, government security force violations which we see on the on the rise uh, uh, at the moment and no real attempt to address those issues uh, obviously the concerns about the uh, immediate humanitarian concerns from a perspective of food shelter clothing health and so forth is an immediate area which Ennio uh, correctly pointed out could be uh, an area where the government will play a uh, much more proactive strategy in terms of winning hearts and minds. Uh, the importance of developing a counter uh, uh, to violent extremism strategy for the country and region and, and uh, as uh, Ineo was pushing uh, and the PV that Anthony was talking about uh, are critical areas uh, of comparative learning. Other quick areas, uh, other areas that I, I wanted to flag uh, uh, requiring attention, uh, certainly the issue of trauma counseling uh, and dealing with uh, psychosocial issues, uh, which obviously can't be prioritized uh, uh, above basic survival uh, considerations. Uh, but they are, they are critical and there are also comparative learning experiences of how to do this 
uh, uh, from other parts of the world. Uh, and the uh, issues raised by Julia, for example, uh, around the impact of uh, the insurgency and counterinsurgency on women uh, is uh, something that requires particular attention. Further attention also needs to be given to uh, conflict resolution, dispute resolution options, and de-radicalization uh, uh, issues. And these need to be uh, developed in terms of spoke uh, 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 responses in the community to the unique, the unique conditions in Cabo Delgado. Just lastly, I just want to say that, that one of the big challenges in providing any of the empirical basis for developing uh, these various approaches uh, relates to the difficulties uh, of access that uh, researchers and journalists are having into Cabo Delgado at the moment, which is frustrating our ability to understand with nuance the push and pull factors that are in play. And just lastly, just on a note of development, we heard at the end of last year Cabo Delgado uh, being part of a northern uh, uh, government development agency that was being launched. Uh, it's being headed by a senior uh, Frelimo member in his late 70s. Uh, whether that is fit for purpose remains to be seen, but we haven't heard anything yet uh, and uh, about what that development agency is doing and how uh, local actors, international community in the region are able to work with that development agency in terms of addressing some of the issues that have been flagged today.